This morning, our reading is about the Lord's very faithful judge, Samuel. He was a priest, and also he was a judge. And he was really respected by the people. Perhaps he was the best judge among many judges in Israel. And she, Hannah, was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you, you will indeed look upon the affliction of your maid servant, and remember me and not forget your maid servant, but will give your maid servant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli watched her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of a sort of first spirit. I have a drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drunk, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Do not consider your maid servant a wicked woman, for out of the abundance of my complaint and grief I have spoken until now. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant you your petition, which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your maid servant find favor in your sight. So the woman went her way, then ate, and her face was no longer sad. Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord, and returned and came to their house at Ramah. And Elkanah knew Hannah, his wife, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I have asked for him from the Lord. Amen. Let me invite children to come forward. Before kings were chosen and placed, placed the Lord appointed and he chose the judges as the leaders over the children of Israel. And in many cases, those judges, they were priests and also the rulers over the people. So at that time, the office of maybe politician leader and also office of a priest were united. It was one office. There were many judges in the land, but Samuel was very special, and he was the best judge because he loved the Lord and he loved the people. But his parents, Elkanah and Hannah, they were very good people because at that time, the tabernacle, the church was in Shiloh, but not that many people went up there to worship the Lord. Many of them forgot about the Lord and didn't pay attention anything to the Lord. Even they didn't think about worshiping the Lord. But Elkanah and Hannah, every year they went up to Shiloh to worship the Lord. So they were very good people. But even though they were very good and nice, they had one big problem. Can you tell me what was that? Elkanah and Hannah didn't have any child. 
it would be very awful. Think about your parents and your home and your family without you. It would be very strange and your parents would be very unhappy without you. And Hannah, she was a great person and came to the tabernacle to worship the Lord. And she prayed there. But she poured out her soul, her mind, because she was very eager to have a child. But she didn't make any sound. She just moved the lips. So high priest Eli, he was sitting in the tabernacle and watched her. And he thought, she is drunk. Because she didn't make any sound and just moved the lips. She looked a little strange, right? So Eli came to her and stopped drinking a woman. But Hannah told him, I'm in my bitterness. I'm very sad. So I poured out everything to the Lord and asked him for a child. And Eli said, go in peace. The Lord listened to you. And after perhaps one year later, Hannah gave birth to a wonderful child, and she named him Samuel. And Samuel means heard by God. Why do you think she named him being heard by God? Because we know that she prayed earnestly, and the Lord listened to a prayer and gave her son as she wished. Do you pray to the Lord? And the Lord listens to you and make things happen, even though you ask him for silly things. <laughs> Sometimes the Lord seems to listen to us, but in many cases he doesn't seem to care for what we ask for. Perhaps the reason is we didn't ask for the right thing. Here, remember Hannah, what she asked for. She asked for a son, but she said, give me a son, the Lord, so that I may offer him to you, that he may serve you and he may serve his neighbors. So Hannah, even though she wanted to have a son, but at the same time, she thought about the Lord and all the people in her prayer. And the Lord loved to make that happen because what she wanted was very charitable and it was very nice thing for the Lord and for other people. So eventually, the Lord gave her a beautiful boy, Samuel. And we know that Samuel came to this, the high priest, and came to the tabernacle, and he will help Eli. And later, he will be the priest, and he will be the judge of the people. We need to pray to the Lord. But when we ask for something, we need to think of the Lord and our neighbor in our minds. Then the Lord may listen to our prayers. Amen. Please go back to your seat. Please bow your head for a blessing. The Lord give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. Amen. Our second reading is taken from chapter 8 of the Gospel of John. Then they said to him, Who are you? And Jesus said to them, Just what I have been saying to you from the beginning. I have many things to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true. And I speak to the word those things which I heard from him. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. Then Jesus said to them, When you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he, 
and that I do nothing of myself, but as my Father taught me, I speak these things. And he who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that please him. As he spoke these words, many believed in him, and Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been in bondage to anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, who have committed sin is a slave of a sin, and a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Our further reading is a portion taken from the True Christian Religion 482. As for the point that if we had no free choice in spiritual matters, we would have no free choice in civil, moral, and earthly matters either. This stands to reason from the fact that the spiritual things that are called theological dwell in the highest region of the human mind, just as the soul dwells in the body. That is where such things live, because the door through which the Lord comes to us is on the level. Beneath them are civil, moral, and earthly concerns which in human beings receive all their life from the spiritual qualities that reside above. Because of life from the Lord flows in at the highest level, because our life consists of the power to freely think and will, and therefore speak and act. It follows that our free choice in politics and earthly matters comes exclusively from our spiritual freedom, our sense of what is good and true, and what is just and upright in civic matters, comes from that spiritual freedom. And this sense is the very essence of a true intellect. Here in the lessons, Blessed are they who hear the word of God and keep it. Amen. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. If you abide in my words. You are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Have you overcome voter fatigue? It is healthy to rise above the election reserved and to work together for the greater good. Although we have suffered from exercising suffrage, the right to vote was granted to everyone from the beginning of the nation. According to history, black men were granted the right to vote in 1870. Women were granted it in 1920. The Native Americans were granted it in 1924. In 1975, literacy and other discriminatory voting requirements are finally banned. As many people have a fault for their right to vote, to acquire it, 
Also, we shouldn't forget those many women and men who sacrificed their lives and served to preserve this precious life and freedom. We honor and appreciate their service. This morning, we are elevated to the concept of a spiritual freedom that feeds and sustains our natural freedom. It is the Lord who makes us free. The Pharisees came and challenged the Lord. Although they strongly believed that they were free men and proud of their status, the descendants of Abraham, the Lord pointed out that never being in bondage to anyone wasn't genuine freedom. Moreover, their heritage could not make them free. As far as we are bonded to sin, we are slaves of sin. Only the Lord can sever that hellish bondage and relieve us from sins. This means spiritual freedom from the Lord can make us free. While we act from spiritual freedom, we do it from the Lord. Freedom is necessary. Freedom or together, freedom together with rationality composes two essential faculties that distinguish us from animals and make us humans. This faculty is granted to us from the Lord. We read, the Lord grants this freedom to every individual and it is never taken away by virtue of its source, it, in fact, belongs to the Lord and not to us. Because it comes from the Lord, yet still it is given to us along with our life, as though it were ours. This is so that we can be reformed and saved, for without freedom there can be no reformation and salvation. What is freedom? How does the faculty distinguish us from animals? Freedom is of love or affection. Thus freedom and love are united. Freedom is a characteristic of everything that belongs to love and everything that belongs to our will. Practicing freedom gives us delight because of its unity with love and affection. This means when we make choices freely, we enjoy autonomous act and right. Furthermore, this faculty allows us to indulge in the things we love and what we care for. We feel delighted in doing what we love. Occasionally, we may think conversely that freedom is a stumbling block on the path toward our regeneration and salvation, particularly while we enjoy our ideal desires and pleasures. Freedom as a crucial, useful spiritually making us better. There are a few reasons why freedom is a prerequisite for regeneration. First, we become interested in the teachings of the Word, which is the authentic guidance for our spiritual growth. And actually read the Word. The Lord continuously flows in with love for truth and good and endeavors to make our contact with them meaningful moments. This love, this love is felt as affection and interest in truth in our lower minds. Our attention and focus enhance our memory and absorption of the information we read. When we possess affection for truth, that is loving real truth, because it is true, and read the word, we are enlightened by the Lord. 
If natural affection is compared to curiosity, our affection for truth is a spiritual affection. <laughs> Second, freedom possesses the power to make it implanted and part of our mind. This is a necessary process to observe and instill the truth of the word and charity from the Lord. Swedenborg observed one peculiar thing in the other word. An evil spirit was once carried up into the world of spirits from hell. Angels asked whether he could understand the things being said that was divine truth. He answered that he was indeed able to understand. He was then asked why he had not accepted similar truth. He said, he did not love them, and therefore he did not will them. He was told that he had the capacity to will them. He was amazed by this but denied that he had that capacity. Angels inspired his intellect with the glory of fame and the pleasures that go with it. And he did, indeed, will and even love those truths. Soon, though he was led back into the former life of evil state, that because he no longer willed those truths, he did not understand them anymore. This incident confirms that all people, regardless of being or evil, good or evil, have a free choice in spiritual things. We can choose what is hellish if we wish, like an evil spirit, some people might deny the existence of such a capability within themselves while they are immersed in actual evils. In the case, recognizing a potential capability to choose something else, or even the opposite, could be very hard. and could be a very positive initiation for repentance. Unfortunately, if there is no love and affection attached to what we know and even once understand, can be neither cherished nor understood later. On the contrary, those who read the word by a spiritual affection for truth and experience in mostly affecting one's heart and spirit. This specific feeling flows in with the divine light into the person's understanding and testifies. These people can think and reason spiritually from their heavenly light, from which angels have their intelligence and wisdom. It has been hinted that as we possess natural love and spiritual love, we have different kinds of freedom. The heavenly doctrines divide freedom into spiritual, rational, natural, and hellish. Spiritual freedom has dual meanings as well as natural freedom. First, the freedom to think and will whatever we wish is spiritual, and the freedom to say whatever we think and to do whatever we wish is natural. So thinking and willing are spiritual, while speaking and acting are natural. Here the distinction is made between the freedom of the spirit and the freedom of the body. Of course, a spiritual freedom is a superior and interior. Natural freedom is inferior and exterior. A further distinction can be made upon the subject and content of a specific freedom. Spiritual freedom deals with spiritual matters, and natural freedom deals with moral, civic, 
and political matters. This distinction is further explained in the hierarchy in TCR, true Christian religion. If we had no free choice in spiritual matters, we could have no free choice in civic, moral, and earthly matters either. This stands to reason from the fact that the spiritual things that are called theological dwell in the highest region of the human mind. Just as the soul dwells in the body that is where such things live, because the door through which the Lord comes into us. Beneath them are civic, moral, and earthly concerns, which in human beings receive all their life from the spiritual qualities that reside above. Because the life from the Lord flows in at the highest level, and because our life consists of the power to freely think and will, and therefore speak and act. It follows that our free choice in politics and earthly matters comes exclusively from our spiritual freedom. Spiritual freedom in spiritual and religious choices feeds and substantiates our natural and earthly freedom in moral, civic, and political choices. The spiritual choice is crucial for our regeneration and salvation. In this we can reckon our thoughts that are good or evil, right or wrong, and honest or dishonest. Then we can decide in this binary condition which one we like to intend and implement. We can take in one and lay aside the other in our freedom. Yet they cannot be laid aside unless we recognize them within ourselves, admit that they exist, no longer will them, and ultimately reject them. Only then are they laid aside. This cannot happen unless we are exposed to both what is good and what is evil, since it is from goodness that we can see evil, though from evil we cannot see goodness. Although the Lord continually flows into us with affection for truth and good, for implantation and appropriation. We must freely choose to take in truth and good from our affection. Unless we have this spiritual freedom in everything we think and will, the Lord could not possibly implant anything. Whatever we choose and do from affection and love constitutes freedom, and we love and fight for them in freedom. In these spiritual temptations, our internal and higher minds are engaged and opened, allowing us to change ideas and principles and loves there. This reformation regeneration, and then salvation become possible. We may like to choose what is force and evil from our affection and claim it as our legitimate freedom. It is the result of our free choice, yet the Lord considers the switch negative choices as a slavery and bondage to hell. Simply love for hellish inclinations is not from the Lord, not at all, but from hell. This is the Lord admonition to the proud Pharisees. The Lord said, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits a sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever. 
freedom is from the Lord. Through the exercise of freedom, the Lord continually leads us away from evils to the extent that we can, through the exercise of freedom, be led away to the same extent the Lord uses the exercise of freedom to implant good. Thus, he gradually replaces infernal freedom with heavenly freedom. Because freedom originated from the Lord, who is good and truth itself, and is operated by him, we may doubt the validity of a really free choice. Yet freedom is intact because it is prompted and maintained from the equilibrium, the balance between heaven and hell. We read, the reason this spiritual equilibrium is essentially a freedom is that it exists between what is good and what is evil and between what is true and what is false. And these are spiritual realities. So the ability to intend either good or evil and to think either truth or falsity, the ability to choose one instead of the other is the freedom. Because it comes from the Lord, yet still it is given us along with our life as though it were ours. The Lord never manipulates this balance between heaven and hell to draw us to heaven, because it would cause an imbalance between good and evil, thus unfreedom. We read, the Lord guards freedom in person, as a person does the pupil of and of his eye. Freedom is precious heavenly faculty that allows us to become humans and later angels. The unique ability distinguishes from animals and inanimate statues or machines. It can also be confusing concept in its different kinds and levels. The highest freedom is a spiritual freedom in which we can make choices between God and idols, heaven and hell, and good and evil. Spiritual freedom provides us with a changing growth. Thus, it is required for our regeneration and salvation. The Lord could implant love for truth and good in our higher minds, in our free state. Choices we freely made become the objects of our love and later part of our life. We fight for the values we cherish and the people we love. Even we are willing to give up our lives to protect and to preserve them. The Lord waited to reveal the spiritual sense, the heavenly doctrines of the word, until spiritual freedom was restored to the people in the church and in the world. The spiritual freedom has been restored since the Lord reduced all things in heaven and hell into order. Restructuring the spiritual world into divine order restored the equilibrium between heaven and hell and freedom in spiritual matters became fully available again. Spiritual freedom was a prerequisite for opening the spiritual sense of the Old and New Testaments and receiving it. Spiritual freedom as the highest freedom is also a prerequisite for our earthly freedom. This statement could inspire the urgent and maybe imperative need to heal political partisans. 
diverse opinions and states of disagreement in worldly matters. As long as we share the same spiritual ideas, such as love to the Lord and neighbor, a schism in worldly matters can be overcome or put aside. The heavenly doctrines point out that the spiritual and natural components in a person have been made distinct so that a person cannot slip from the one to the other except as the result of a conscious decision. This decision may be likened to a door which must first be unlatched and opened. We need to make efforts to leave this door open between spiritual and natural minds. In this condition of harmony, love, wisdom, and enlightenment from the divine influx can be present in our words, demeanors, and attitudes. As the harmony between the spiritual and natural is strengthened, the state of spiritual freedom increases, and the exercise of natural freedom decreases, becomes submissive to spiritual freedom. We read, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. Amen. And now to the one only God, Jesus Christ, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. For Jesus Christ, our Lord, we ask you to give us understanding and strength, that we may walk steadfastly in your ways. Give us faith and truth in the operation of your providence. Enlighten us from your word, and every choice of life we may seem to choose the better way. Remind us of the fact that, turning from our evil ways, is always possible, and it is an exercise of our spiritual freedom that our Lord preserves and grants. May we never stagnant in our spiritual journey, but always seek to grow and mature. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen.